Hello, and welcome to Grug Gaming, and welcome back to our Let's Play of Ultima 7 The Black Gate. In our last episode, we finished up the uh, Forge of Virtue, and we were ready to continue our adventures in trying to track down who we think are the murderers from Trinsic. So, last we heard, they were on their way to Moonglow. So we're going to be headed that way. I have done a little bit of gambling in uh, Buck's Den. So we have a little bit of money. Just a little. It's, it's a lot. Um, I also went ahead and, with our money, went to the multiple mages. And I went ahead and filled out most of our spell books so that we have all the spells that we could find. Um, so we even have the Armageddon spell. We shan't be casting that. Um, I also purchased a large amount of reagents, so for example, we can cast Mark and Recall 70 some times here before we run out. Just so that we don't have to worry about it. Um, I couldn't find a vendor for some reagents, so we don't have all of them. Maybe Moonglow will have another uh, reagent vendor. I also went through to the Apothecary in Britain, and I went ahead and purchased a large amount of potions for us to use in combat because just in case we need them I went ahead and bought a large amount of sleeping potions and I stocked up on some healing potions as well just in case we need them and of course I restocked our food bags so we should be good to go for quite a while on the food front so we are ready to go so what we need to do is we are here in Vesper, and we need to travel to Moonglow. And Moonglow, if you remember, is down here on this island. Um, isn't this... Is the Lyceum north of Moonglow? I can't tell. Oh, I wish I had a map that was just translated. Oh, but we'll deal with it. So that's where we're going to be heading. So we have more... Uh, we're going to 60 by... Uh, what does this say at the top? Of course, I can't figure out how to use my map here. 60 by 180 is where we're headed to for sextant coordinates if we need them. 60 by 180. So, let's get back on our boat, which I believe we left over here. Yeah, there it is. There's our boat. Go ahead and get on board, everybody on. I said everybody on. Or or don't... There we go. Go ahead and get mounted up. Oh, hey. It uh, made our thing go up. Uh, let's get our video options set to sailing mode. Uh, I think I want that at 4x, don't I? Whatever, that'll work. All right. Let's do a save before we get traveling. Just in case. You never know. All right. Oh, I also trained up our characters. So we used up their training points and got them some more strength and combat skill. So let's get sailing, shall we? Again, we need to sail uh, kind of just south, southeast. And we should just hit an island. Bam! There's an island. Is this the island? Again, we're going for... What were the coordinates here I'm looking at? We were going to... 30 south by 180 west. So let's just take a look here. 30 south by 180 west. 37... Ah, uh, we're not... Oh, this is the edge of, I'm an idiot. This is the edge of Fire Island. We need to go this. There we go. There we go. So down here on the south of this island, I think we should hopefully have some ports. Maybe? Pretty sure this is our... Yeah, there's our destination. Aha! That's what we needed. Stop. Stop it, game. Let us park the vessel. Okay. 
We'll lower the sails. Gangplank down. Can we get off the boat? All right. We're good to get off the boat. Woo! So if we've done this correctly, we should be here at Moonglow. Time to find out. Uh, but of course, let's make... Oh, we got books and books and books. Uh, oh, this is the uh, Romeo's Britannian. So the maps of Britannia, in case you need it. We got Bromer's Fauna. Or Bromer's Fauna. I can read. I'm good at the reading. Betwixt the covers of this book can be found details on the most prevalent animals that inhabit the lands of Britannia. Deer are quite prevalent in the forested areas of Britannia. They are shy creatures, generally shunning the presence of man, whom they know hunt them. Atop their heads sits a pair of antlers. I don't know why I'm talking funny. The fox is a small animal, akin to a dog or a wolf. It is an omnivore, and more than willing to make off with a farmer's chicken when it tires of other foods. Okay, and what's this one? Ah, Brahmer's Flora. This large tome describes most of common plants in indigenous to Britannia. The gear plant is especially fascinating, for it spends most of its life huddled with its leaves, wrapped up in a tight ball. However, every so often the leaves will unfurl, radiating out from the stem. The reaper is unique in that it is both plant and animal. Resembling a large tree, the reaper is also capable of self-animation as well as self-locomotion. Reapers have been known to attack those who cause harm to their home, i.e. the forest, but seldom reveal themselves otherwise. Which is probably good. Um, it'd be best that they, if reapers don't just go marauding through the countryside. Anything in this barrel? More books! Encyclopedia, is this going to be the whole thing? Oh no! Oh no! Okay, wait, we don't have to read them all. Volume 1, another volume in a long series of books detailing every known geographical location historical personage. This work covers Akara, the first mayor of Trizic, through Exodus, the vile offspring of Mondain and Minax. Um, cool, so we have all of the, uh, all the stuff here. Oh, there's actually important information. So that's book one. Volume two. Here's another volume. Uh, this work covers Falga, the ancient sage of reptiles, through the Lyceum, the renowned library that is now a part of Moonglow. Volume three. Here's another volume. This tome covers Kainos, a historical tower in ancient Yu, through Pusmaran, the originator of the rarely used fourth person point of view. Huh. Volume 4. This volume covers. Oh, Quaxa Talanarakom, the mythological snow beast of the north, through Utopia, the proposed manifestation of the time order concept of a perfect society. And last but not least, Volume 5. This tome covers Vargas, contemporary storyteller and compiler of legendary parables through Zyand, a prehistoric island. Huh. Okay. Well, that's pretty awesome. I'm pretty sure we're in Moonglow. Oh, I hope we're in Moonglow. And speaking of Moonglow, let's get our map of Moonglow up and running here. Page 14 on Ye Old Tome. Woo! What a giant, giant town. Oh my goodness, this is going to be many episodes in this town. This is the town of Moonglow. You can see she's pretty big. We're going to be here a while. Let's check it out. Alright, so... Hopefully, hopefully we're near Moonglow. Hopefully we are near the town. I think we are. If this is Chad the Trainer, we're good. Yep, Trainer. So we're in Moonglow. 
We've made it to Moonglow, folks. Oh, look at this. It's got a really big trading room. Uh, we have so much stuff that unless we find magical items, we're not going to pick everything up. Um, which is another problem we're having. Is uh, not so much the weight of everything. Our strength is high enough that we can pretty much carry whatever we need. The problem we're running into is that our bags, just that you can't fit stuff in them, which has been an issue. All right. You see a live looking fighter. See smiles in your direction. What is your name, sir? Chad, at thy service, my lord. And what is thy name? I am Grug. The, I'm the Avatar. Of course, of course. He smiles. I should have realized that thou wert the Avatar. Why, it must have been, oh, at least two weeks since thy last visit. He winks at you. Thou art a fool. Cannot thy feeble eyes see this is the Avatar? Yes, yes, I can see that, he laughs. Then I must be Yolo. No, Rogue, he is Yolo. He nods to Yolo. Thou art a blind idiot. What's your job? I teach expertise with light weapons here in Moonglow. Tell me about Moonglow. Dost thou want the location of the city or to know about the townspeople? Well, tell me about the location. Moonglow is on an island directly east of the border between Britain and Paws. Well, that's good, because we're at Moonglow. The people. The person to ask for that information would be Fersey, the bartender. All I know are other bar patrons. Tolomac and Moores, two farmers. Okay, cool. Well, you're useless. Remember, always keep thy wits about thee and thy blade ready. Oh, this blade is... We have a blade already, and he is ready to eat the souls of people here in Britannia. Ooh. Looks like we got maybe a farm or something up here on the left. We're going to check out. Let's see. Not much music here in Moonglow. Not a lot going on. Uh, this just... There's nothing over there. Huh. A lot of wasted space. Yeah, we got a farm. We got some corn. Let's go check this farm out. See what's going on. Hey, there's a farmer. There's a couple farmers. These must be the two guys he drinks with. The man before you shyly looks away. What's your name, buddy? Mama Moores. What's your job? I work with Cook Cook Coolbolt for farming here. All right, tell me about Cool. We're not going to make fun of him. No. We may have gone down the road of evil by binding a demon to the sword we're carrying, but we're not going to go down the path. Come on. Kubalt? He is Ptolemy's older brother. I trust him. All right, who is Ptolemy? Ptolemy is my first friend. I've known him for a long time. He just joined the fellowship. He wants me to join. What about your stutter? What's the stutter? Oh, I'm sorry. How may I help thee? Uh, tell us your name, your job again. I work with this guy farming. Uh, Kubalt here in Moonglow. Okay, what do you know about Moonglow? He points to the ground. That is here. Oh, great. Uh, Ptolemic. He's his friend, and he's known him for a very long time. He just joined the fellowship. He wants me, me, me to, 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 to join to join. Tell me about the fellowship. T -t -t Ptolemy says that they do many good things and they would help me, me, me make f -f -f friends more or easily. C -c -c Cobalt thinks they're b -b bad. I do not n know what to, to do. All right. Well, I wouldn't join because they're evil. What do you have to say? Oh, there's like a thousand people over here. Oh, he's got a cool hat. You see a man with an unhappy look about his face. What's your name? I am Kubalt of Moonglow. What's your job? I am a farmer, my lord. I manage my farm with the help of Ptolemy, my brother, and Moors, our family friend. Uh, Ptolemy? He is my younger brother. Need I say more? I am a little concerned about him, though. I am used to his rebellious behavior, but recently he's joined the Fellowship. That frightens me. They frighten me. I have tried to get him to come to his senses. But he is too busy enjoying making me worry to listen. Also, he's trying to get Moors to join. I wish I could get him to reconsider. Moors? 
My brother and I have known Morris for most of our lives. He's very friendly when he's not too busy worrying about his stutter. Unfortunately, he listens to Tullebeck far too often. Oh, the Fellowship. You don't like him, eh? He spits on the ground. A bane to Britannia is what the Fellowship is. They have some odd philosophy that teaches thee to forget who thou art and follow them. The process is dehumanizing. And I think it meshes poorly with the eight virtues. Not only that, but their leader, Hero Moonglow, has persuaded Ptolemy to join. Um, what about Moonglow? The city occupies the entire island now, including the Lyceum. Most of the residents still live in the south, though. We are due east of Britain proper. That's true, you are. I keep hearing weird noises. I don't know if it's the game or the cat into something he shouldn't be into. Who knows? Um, tell me about the residents. Zelda, the clerk of the Lyceum, would be the best person to talk to about Moonglow's residence, or the bartender, though I do not know his name. I know the observatory head and the Lyceum head are twins, but I have never met either of them. I do know that thou dost not want to talk to Rankin or Belania at the Fellowship. They are ill news to our once pleasant city. All right, and you want him to reconsider. Unfortunately, Ptolemec will not listen to me. However, he begins to smile, hopefully. He just might listen to thee, my lord. Perhaps thou couldst talk him into reconverting. I would very much appreciate that. Perhaps, he adds, thou couldst ask Moors not to join. All right. Let's do this. Let's save these people from the fellowship. You see a friendly looking farmer. What's your name? I am called Ptolemic, my lord. What's, tell me about the fellowship. Oh, what's your job first? I help my brother tend our farm here in Moonglow. Tell me about the fellowship. Rankin and Belayla would be the best ones to ask, my lord, but I can tell thee our main tenants. We believe strongly in neorealism, which is a form of optimistic outlook which may be reached through the triad of inner strength. I am hoping that soon I will be able to hear the voice that comes with meeting one's higher potential. Also, my lord, the fellowship fosters many feasts and festivals. I strongly recommend that thou ask Rankin about joining. All right, what about your... Tell me about Moonglow. Yes, my lord. That is the name of the town thou art in. Dost thou have questions about the townspeople? Sure. I know only a few here, my lord. My brother Kubolt runs the farm with me. Moores helps us too. We've known him for many years. And now that I've joined the Fellowship, I've met a few more people. Rankin's branch hand here in Moonglow, and Belenia is his assistant. If thou dost want to know the other people, thou mayest want to ask the bartender his name is Fiercy. Uh, tell me about Moores. Moores and I grew up together. He's very sensitive about his stutter, though, so I would not bring it up. Belena? She is the branch clerk. Most of the time, she is friendly. Sometimes, she seems a little cold. And Rankin? Rankin is very intelligent. He is the one who persuaded me to join the Fellowship. I have much respect for him. Alrighty. Uh, brother. My brother is Cubolt. He frowns for a moment. He can be a bit overbearing at times, trying to take care of me. But he shrugs. He means well. Perhaps I know I've caused him a bit of trouble every now and then. He says with a grin. But he deserves it. How about reconverting? Reconvert? Why would I want to do that? Did my brother request this? He has always had a problem with letting me make my own decisions. Nay, my lord, I will not abandon my beliefs. The fellowship has done too much for my life. Ah, oh, I wonder what they've done for his life. Get thee away! I'll hear no more of thy lies! Uh-oh. Moors, how may I help thee? Uh-oh. Uh He's off! Well, we better talk to his brother again. Oh, no! Well, we better tell his brother we couldn't get him to join. Hey, guy, come back. Hey, guy who asked us to do him a favor, come back here. Oh, he's gone. He's probably off drinking. You know how these... Oh, the free food. No one needs to see what's happening here. No one at all. Especially when it's meat. Oh, it won't fit. Jaina, how's your uh, how's your bag of meat doing? Are we full? Yeah, wow, we are full up on the meat. 
I guess we will leave this free food behind. Got a locked chest here. Where's old Locky McPicky at? There we go. Uh, we got a Morning Star, a crossbow, but that's it. That's all that's in there. Why these guys have a Morning Stone, a cross, Morning, Morning Star, in a crossbow? That's a pretty good question. We should probably ask. Uh, what do they got in here? If we could, uh, just some pants. That's it. Just pants. Well, we better talk. We better find Q Bolt and tell him that we failed at life. Q Bolt looks up. Yes, my lord. Uh, no, didn't work. Never mind. Hopefully, that doesn't come back to bite us that we asked someone to leave the fellowship. Hopefully, that doesn't cause us an issue with our our other fellowship members. Uh, Yolo, are you? Do you have any ammo? Oh, you do. You got a couple. All right, we got a crossroads here. Uh, we'll go to the right first because there's only one house off to the right for us to check out. I could use a drink. I could use a drink too. The something, the friendly knave. This is the inn. Ooh, now that's an inn. You see a handsome, hardened, muscular man who surprisingly bears a friendly smile on his face. What's your name, sir? I am called Adam, my lord. What's your job? I travel the world in search of rare and unique items to sell to museums. I am not a resident of Moonglow. Ooh, tell me about Moonglow. I'm afraid, my lord, that I know nothing about this fair city. I reside in you with my wife, Penny, who is the trainer there. Actually, my lord, I have met two people here other than Nelson. Okay. Tell me about Penny. She teaches close quarter combat. Everything I needed to know to survive on my journeys, I learned from her. What about travel? I've been all over Britannia, my lord. Nothing about the land frightens me any longer. The same is not true of some of the residents. Which residents? It was a joke, my lord. People? I've come to know the bartender and the healer. Who's the healer? Elad is very generous. In fact, he is letting me sleep in one of his spare beds while I am in town. His only charge, he laughs, is the stories I tell him about mine adventures. Not a bad trade if I say so myself. The bartender? Fiercy is quite friendly, but he does love to gossip. He has offered me a deal whereby I might earn free meals if I can discover why Nelson's assistance reacts differently to some man. Or something like that. I'm not going to bother. But pray, do not tell Fursy that. Ooh, maybe we can find out. Nelson. He is in charge of the Lyceum. He loves trinkets and rarities. And the items you find. I found many odd artifacts. Many of the things thou hast seen in the music hall and the Lyceum have been brought to them by me. In fact, my lord, I have this unique crystal I found on the mainland near Jalome that I am hoping will fetch a fair price from Nelson. He pulls out a small clear crystal and shows it to you. The facets gleam in the light. All right. May the days be always pleasant, my lord. I hope they will. Hey, Fiercy. How's the bartender? Oh, Fiercy, that is, that is not a good look. This orange collar, bad idea. Why, hello, Sir Dupre. Things for well, I trust. I love how Dupre is known in every bar. In Britannia. Greetings, fair Fursy. Yes, thank thee, things are well. You see a man who gives you a friendly smile. What's your name? I am Fiercy at thy service. Your job. I'm the bartender here in Moonglow. The fellowship? Oh, thou refers to this, he asked, pointing to his medallion. Thou hast not heard of the fellowship? I strongly recommend that thou speakest with Rankin or Belania. At the branch office, the Fellowship has done many things for our town. It's not for all of Britannia. I am a firm believer in neorealism. What is neorealism? That is the fundamental principle of the Fellowship. Okay, it's just the triad of inner strength, 
which is strive for unity, trust thy brother, and one other one. Oh yes, thou dost get what thou deservest, or some such. He doesn't seem too, too big into the fellowship. Uh, thou wants to know about someone in the town? Thou hast asked the right person. I know all about the residents here in Moonglow. I'd be happy to tell thee about any of the shopkeepers, scholars, or farmers who live here. Or about the interested in the trainer, healer, or mage, or fellowship leaders. Oh, goodness. All right, shopkeeper. She is a tailor. She's a lovely woman. That Carolyn, she minds the bar when I go to the fellowship meetings at night. But I would rather discuss Zelda. Ooh. The scholars. Ah, the learned scholars. I can tell thee about Brian, Nelson, Zelda, and Julian. Brian. Ah, so does wonder too. All I know is that every time someone mentions Bria or Brian's name to Zelda, her serious expression changes to a smile. I have a deal for thee. Find out what their story is, and I will give thee and thy friends a free meal and drink. Thou canst find Brian at the observatory and Zelda at the Lyceum. Nelson. He is Brian's twin's brother. Jillian. Wonderful scholar. Very nice woman. Married to Ephraim. Ephraim. Friendly fellow. I like him. All right. Tell me about the farmers. Ptolemic and Cubalt are brothers. With Morse's help, they run a farm. Tell me about the trainer. Chad is a friendly fellow. I like him. The healer. Friendly fellow. I like him. His name is Elad. Uh, the mage. Ah, yes. Maria is... <gasps> Maria! The mage? Oh, we might have another party member. Leaders. Dost thou want to know about the one in charge or his clerk? Uh, one in charge. Rankin is in charge of the entire local branch. If thou hast any question about the fellowship, he can answer them. The clerk? If thou hast any question about the fellowship, a Bolania can answer them. Okay. And cool. Bye. Remember, tell them thou dost eat at the friendly knave. Maria is somewhere here in town. Oh, that's going to be awesome. Oh, if we can get another party member, that will be what I like to call sweet. Hey, some fish cheese. We got a book here. Thou art what thou eats. We've read that before. Nothing new there. And nothing to steal in this man's house worth a darn. I'm sorry, nothing to appropriate for the needs of the avatar. Where is the healer? I mean, the the mage. Oh my goodness. Was Jillian ever a party member? I don't think she was. I think, but, but Maria was a party member. She was a mage with us. She's not gonna be much use if magic doesn't work. Hopefully she hasn't gone crazy. Oh, that would suck. Ooh, this is someone's fancy house. Probably Chad's. This seems like the kind of house Chad would keep. You know. Just just says Chad. Uh, and he... He locks up his utensils. That says more about Chad than anything. Uh, clothing? Throw it in a box. My plate and fork and knife? Better lock that away in a chest. Oh, Chad. Uh, this... Healer. This must be Elad. Alright, we got Elad, we got... A guy in a bed. We got a chest. Which is locked. is now no longer locked. Ooh. We don't need the gold. Don't care about gold. Only care about magic items. Ooh, what's that? That's eating you It's a spoon. Alrighty. The man looks at you through smiling eyes. What's your name? Elad is my name, my lord. What's your job? I am the healer of the residents of this community. The residents? There are many people in Moonglow. My father once told me that the town was much smaller during his time. In fact, he said that Moonglow used to be separate from the Lyceum. But I digress. Thou dost ask about the people. I know most of the residents here, 
As I want to know about the Lyceum, the Observatory, the Fellowship, the Farmers and Trainer, or the Tavern. Everybody here at Moonglow is just willing to just chat. Just talk about everyone. Alright. He, uh, we don't need healing. Community. Moonglow is mine home. I have lived in this town for mine entire life, but I am weary of my life here. It is time, I think, to move on. If only I did not have such strong ties here. He sighs sadly. There is a traveler visiting from you. He's seen many exciting things in Britannia. I enjoy listening to his many tales of adventure. Huh, tell me about the Lyceum. The Lyceum is run by a kind man named Nelson. His advisor is Zelda. Do not break any rules in her presence, or thou will receive a sharp reprimand. Jillian also studies there. She can teach thee many things. And do not worry about Maria. She is harmless, if thou wilt but leave her be. The Observatory. The head there is Brian. Brian. I'm never going to say that name right. He is the twin of the head of the Lyceum. I like him, although he and his brother are both a little eccentric. The Fellowship. I know these people least of all. The branch opened here about five years ago under the direction of a man named Rankin. A few months ago, a clerk joined him. Her name is Belena. The Farmers. Cubalt owns the farm. He manages it with his younger brother, Tolomac, and their friend, Moors. I'm not positive, but I believe Tolomac recently joined the Fellowship. Trainer. The trainer is named Chad. I believe he specializes in swift, skillful fighting, with knives and swords and such. See if thou wishes to improve thy skills. The Tavern. Fiercy owns the bar there. He is another good person with whom thou should speak about the townspeople. However, he enjoys gossip and may be a bit single-minded. Traveler. His name is Adam. While he is in town, I am letting him stay in one of my beds. What ties do you have? My patients here in Moonglow. Who will help them, if not I? Healing? Yes, I sell my healing services to those who need them. Services? Perhaps thou couldst come for healing when I'm working in my shop. Um, no, it's okay. Very well. May thy journeys be filled with prosperity. He sighs suddenly. His face brightens. Wait! Perhaps I could join thee. He quickly stands up smiling. Then just as suddenly his smile fades. No, I cannot. I have far too many things to do. Too many people to care for. Perhaps in the future? He forces a smile. I hope when we meet next time, my lord, I will have the opportunity to join thee. Pleasant journey, my friend. So maybe we can free this guy up and he'll join us? Uh, I can't ask him to join. Very well. Then he goes, I'm going to join you, and then I can't join you. Aw. I was hoping he'd join us. We do have a couple quick books to read. Ew, band-aids. Uh, the Art of Field Dressing, we've read that before. The Apothecary's Desk reference, nothing new. And Biophysics of the Healing Art, we've read as well. Well, folks, we're about a half hour, so we'll wrap up the episode there. Uh, when we finish, uh, we will head north and check out more of the town. So we'll be doing that on the next episode of Gaming with Grug. Until then, I want to say, as usual, thanks for watching. Please tell your friends. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and as always, we hope to see you soon.